Welcome back to the lab, your place for tutorials, travel and inspiration. And today for a new hologram tutorial. So the first shot we need is I'm coming here with the mouse, tapping on it, spin it one, two, three more times, tap on it and go away. So here when I tap on the mouse, this is where all the icons appear. Then I'm spinning it, go three further and then I'm tapping and then they disappear. So what we first gonna do is set the markers. So I'm coming here. Then when I tap the second time here, right here, I set a marker and make sure the marker is up here on the timeline and not down here on your clip because later in the fusion, we will see it only when they up here. Then I go further and here when I start spinning, I set also a marker and then when I stop it here a marker so I know here in between I need to do this spin animation then I go further and here I go one icon further and once again here and this one here's the last one and then I tap again one and two times and here the hologram disappears so these are the markers we need later for the animation then the second thing you need is all the icons you want to have. So I've just made some screenshots here of these icons on my desktop, imported them and I just put them here above the other clip. So you can see these are so very low quality screenshots, nothing really special, but it really does the job for, for this tutorial. Um, so just stack them above each other until you have a cake like that. Down here is your clip with your mouse wheel. Then select all of them and create a new fusion clip with them. And with that fusion clip, we jump right into fusion. So your fusion will be a big mess like that, but you can delete all the merge nodes and the background nodes. Now click on this little dot here so you can see which clip it is. So this is the clip with the mouse. That's perfect because we need this clip here on the bottom and we connect it to the media out. And all the other clips, we can just leave them up here. So when I click here on the little dot, you can see these are just all the different icons we put into our scene. But make sure your media out is here on the right viewer. So first search a frame where your mouse is here in the scene. Then to make things way easier, we select here a background and connect it to the media in here on the square. So this creates a new merge node. And then we want a circle here on the background. So this creates this little shape. Go to the background and make it a bit more transparent. This is only for a reference later when we put the icons around here. So this makes our life a whole lot easier. So just place here this circle in the middle of this mouse wheel. So here is the mouse wheel and I think the middle should be somewhere around here I would say. And now adjust here the ellipse mask as big as you want to have the animation. So I make it like this big and this will be the edge where we place all the little icons around here. This is just for, for a reference point. Then we take here the first icon and put it into our scene. For that we take here the multi-merge, not the normal merge, we take the multi-merge and connect here the icon to the multi-merge and connect it to the square of the media out. And you see we have it into our scene here. We take here a multi-merge to plug every single icon into here and then we can animate all together and not one by one. This makes your life a whole lot easier. Now you see I simply done some screenshots so I have here this black border around here and we want to have this more like a hologram. So what we do is go here to the merge node, apply mode, set it to lighten. Like that we get rid of this black border around here and now we need to position here this icon. For that we select it, hit shift and spacebar, type in transform. And for the size it looked in my opinion the best when we put it to 0.15 press enter so this is the size we want to have and now simply place it up here so make sure you have here on this green square here on the left and the right the same distance and then it should be placed perfectly and make sure the angle is at zero here so this is our first icon here on top and I place it exactly like that so here on the edge and on the left on the right I have pretty much the same space 
and to make it look a bit more like a hologram here in between after here the media in we hit shift and spacebar and type in soft glow then reduce the gain to 0.5 and the glow size to around 50. So this is just a little detail but makes a huge of a difference. So and now we need to position every single icon here. For that select here the glow and the transform node, Control or command C, Control or command V and copy it to every single icon you have. And now we will do it step by step. Here take the next icon, connect it to the soft glow and the transform to the multi merge. Now you see we have it at exact same place with the soft glow and even the, the black borders around are away. And now to position them, so I have 12 icons divided by these 360 degrees are 30 degrees. So that means I go here to the transform and the angle I type here in 30 degrees. So this is the angle of the next icon. And now I just position it where it fits. So I check here, the underline must be exactly at the circle. And on the left, on the right, I have exactly the same space like that. Then I connect the next one, plug it in, go to the transform, type here in 60. So we have zero, 30, 60 degrees, and then 90, 120, 150, 180. I think you got the hang of it. So we have all them around here and position it as it needs to be. So this will take a while, but when you do it very carefully, it will look amazing at the end. So this one is 90 degrees and put it right there. So once you've placed all your icons, it should look like that. Everything is connected here into the multi-merge and down here to the merge. Now we only need to animate this. So let me make here a bit more space. Here, select the multi-merge, hit shift and spacebar and type in transform. And this is the transform node where we can animate this whole thing. But there's just one little thing we need to change. When we rotate it, you can see it rotates not here in the circle. So we need to change here the pivot point exactly to the same point where this ellipse is. So we take this ellipse here to the left viewer, then disable here solid and on border width type in 0.3 and press enter and just put the slider up until you have here just a very little circle like that. Maybe we can go to 0.5 and put it a little bit down. So we have only just a very, very small circle inside here like that. So we can position our pivot point exactly there. So we can zoom here a little bit in, take the transform node here on the pivot, put it exactly to the middle of this little dot. So that's perfect. And now we can delete here our background. We don't need it for now, because now when I select the transform node and I go here to the angle, it rotates exactly around our mouse wheel. So that's exactly what we want. Now let's go to the animation. For that, we need to open up our splines up here. And now you can see we have all the markers we've set earlier in the edit page. So make sure your transform node is selected, then go through your timeline. Then here on the first marker, the whole animation appears. So I set here on the size a keyframe, go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames further and set also a keyframe. Then I go back to the first one and I reduce the size to zero. So here on these eight frames, the whole animation appears. Then on the next marker, we start with the spin animation. So here on angle, I set a keyframe and then I spin it until to this marker here. Here I stop the whole animation. And now make sure you rotate it to the right angle. So note this one, it should rotate this way right here but keep one thing in mind which icon you want to have at least so in my example i want to have of course the davinci resolve logo here at the end so here i'm spinning one more time so on this marker i should scroll to the davinci resolve logo so i make here the stop then i make like one two three more clicks and then i want to be at DaVinci Resolve. So that means at this marker, I need to be, this one is the one I want to have at the end. So I need to be at one, two, three, at this icon here. So I go three times further at the end and then I'm at DaVinci Resolve. 
So this is the position I want to have here when I stop the spinning. I hope you can follow along with these steps. Then on the next marker, we do no adjustments. We just set a keyframe on the angle. And then here I go to the next icon. So I go one, two, three, four, five, six frames further. And I adjust it 30 degrees. So it should be around minus 435. Then I go to the marker, no adjustments, just the keyframe. One, two, three, four, five, six frames further, minus 30 degrees. So 465 right here. Go to the marker, set a keyframe without adjustments and one, two, three, four, five, six frames further, minus 30 degrees, 495, like that. This is the whole spin animation. And then I do nothing just here at the end it disappears at this marker so back to size here set the keyframe one two three four five six seven eight frames further we reduce it to zero so what we've done we're coming then we open it up spin it very fast spin it three more times and then it disappears this is the whole animation we've done with only one transform node so back in the fusion we want to smooth all of them so click here on this zoom to fit and first disable here the angle we only want to have at the size. Select everything with command or control A and press F. Not S, we only want to press F because when you press S we make it here bigger. So press F and then T. This opens up here this window. Is in to around 80. This makes this animation very engaging. And now we do the opposite. Disable here the size, enable the angle. Select everything and once again press F and leave it like that. It will look very good. And then we can close the splines so we have a bit more space down here. There's two more steps we need to do. First, we don't want to have the icons down here. So for that, we make a mask. Select here this rectangle mask and plug it into the merge tool here in the blue alpha channel. And now you can only see everything what's here in the rectangle mask. We want to have it inverted. So everything what's inside the mask is not visible, only the outside. And then we position the mask down here, where we have here this, this focus line. You can exactly see where the focus of the camera is. And we position it right there. And we give it a little bit of a soft edge, just a little bit to make it a bit smoother. So you see that makes a very nice blurry disappearing effect here. These are the little details we, we want to achieve here in, in these animations. And to make it even more realistic, we want to have our hand and the mouse in the foreground. So the, all the icons go behind our hand. For that, we go back to the edit page and we just copy this whole fusion clip one layer above. But we don't want to track the whole clip, only the sections we need. So go here to the first marker where the animation appears, set a cut, delete the beginning, we don't want to track that. And here at the end, somewhere around here, the animation ends and trim it from here on. So we only want to track here this section, not the whole clip. Now select the upper clip, go to the fusion page. You can delete everything we have here, we don't need it. With the media in selected, hit shift and spacebar, type in magic mask. Now draw a line over the mouse and over the hand, just like that and track it the whole clip. Once your tracking is finished, go back to the edit page and your animation should be behind your hand. So it's almost finished, we just need to add motion blur. And trust me, do the motion blur at the end, your PC will cook some eggs if you do it before. Open the bottom clip in the Fusion page, go here to the transform node where we did the whole animation, go to settings, motion blur, quality and shutter angle all the way up. Then you have your icon spinning mouse wheel animation. With that said, have fun creating and see you in the next one.